good morning students so in yesterday's class uh, we discussed uh, so the main uh, necessity of the bearings that is why bearings are used that is why it is very essential in uh, many of the machine components and what are the various types of bearings based upon the two different criteria we have seen so in that uh, coming to the next that is a very first topic uh, in a uh, the design of machine member in the unit 1 bearings so the that the classification we are already seen in the previous class so that is what uh, based upon the nature of contact between the two surfaces that is the bearing surface and their uh, relative motion of the machine component we are seen that uh, so first kind of its uh, bearing uh, is a sliding contact bearing so as per our syllabus we are having the two designs of bearings one is a sliding contact bearings as well as a rolling contact bearings so first of all we can go through the sliding contact bearing so as i said that uh, so if there is an uh, fixed element that is a bearing surface we consider and uh, there is another machine component uh, intends to move uh, that is uh, can forms in sliding action between the two surfaces that the kind of bearings we call it as sliding contact bearings that is simply we have defined or we simply we are seen in a previous class so in coming to the types of uh, sliding contact bearing the sliding contact bearings also are having a different types of uh, bearings uh, that is available so in sliding contact bearings uh, we can observe uh, there is a two types of uh, sliding contact bearings based upon the sliding motion uh, it can takes place for example you can observe here uh, so if this this is the block of the machine block so that slides upon this uh, slider so which will forms an uh, straight line motion that is uh, it can forms an uh, straight line motion uh, of the sliding that is a sliding action can takes place along the straight line which we call it as a slider or slipper bearings so that is a slider bearings so and coming to the another type that is a sliding action can takes place around the circumference of the shaft that is a circumferential motion or there is an arc of circumference that is a partial uh, uh, circumferential motion can take place that the bearings we call it as an a sleeve bearings or plain bearing there is a two types of bearings uh, we generally classified if the sliding action can takes place uh, gives the sliding that is in a straighter way that is a straight line motion we call it as slider bearings or uh, slipper bearings or there is an another type that is an uh, it is if the sliding action can takes place around the circumference we call it as an plain bearings or sleeve bearings that is what here the sliding action is guided in a straight line motion so which forms a straight line we call it as an uh, guide bearings or slipper bearings and if it is an the bearing action can takes place around the circumference of a circle or arc of a circle that is a circumferential sliding motion can takes place that the bearings we call it as an sleeve bearings or journal bearings so again if these are, so in the in view of that is a focusing in view of our syllabus point of view so the we are going to mainly focus on these type of bearings that is a sleeve or journal bearings if these are sleeve bearings can subjected to the radial type of load we are already seen that what is how the loads are acting in the previous class if the load is acting perpendicular to the axis of shaft that we call it as a radial bearings if these types of uh, sleeve are the plain bearing subjected to the radial type of loads that is here so radial type of loads it is subjected to are known as a journal bearings or sleeve bearings clear these are the two types of uh, sliding contact bearings based upon the fashion of the way the sliding action can take place there is a plain bearings if it is a circumferential and we call it as a slipper bearings if it is a straight line motion and coming to the we are mainly focusing upon the second type of the bearings that is which will forms in a sliding action in a circumferential fashion that is the bearings of slipper that is a sleeve plain bearings which is subject to the radial type of loads we call it as a journal bearings please remember these stuff so that is a journal bearings we are mainly focusing upon these type of the bearings which are the circumferential motion that is sliding action takes place and subject to the radial type of loads that the design we are going to do in this uh, class and coming to the sliding contact bearings uh, types that is a classification of sliding contact bearings again based upon the type of load this can be divided uh, that is classified uh, upon the type of load that is uh, radial loads that is radial bearings if the bearing subjected to the or supports the axial type of loads we call it as a thrust bearings and depending upon the construction so in our previous semester there is a course uh, machine drawing so in that course we already drawn the various types of bearings so based upon the classic that is a construction of the bearings we can also have the different types of bearings comes under the some of the types that is under uh, radial bearings and under, under the thrust bearings so let us uh, go through the brief uh, uh, look into these types of bearings 
So first of all come to the radial type of bearings that is a sliding contact which will support the radial type of loads we call it as a radial bearing. So in that we have uh, three different types of bearings. One is a solid bearing and another one is bushed bearing and another one is pedestal bearing and coming to the thrust bearings that can support the axial type of loads we are having the two types of bearing that is a collar bearing and footstep bearing or we call it as a pivot bearing. I think uh, you are already aware of these kinds of bearings uh, you are already drawn the designs in the in your previous course of machine drawing itself and coming to the that is a classification of uh, sliding contact bearings continued. So it is a type of uh, bearings uh, subjected to the radial type of road that is a radial bearings. So we are having three different types of bearings. One is a solid bearing. If you observe clearly the solid bearing which is a uh, simple uh, uh, casting part of cast iron using the cast iron. Simple cast iron block is there. They can drill a hole and the shaft can be shaft can be inserted or accommodated through the hole which, and the base can be provided in order to assemble the bracket to the machine component that is a simple type of the, the basic type of the sliding contact bearing we call it as a solid bearing. So here there is no accommodation for the or no uh, accommodation for the wear, wear changes so, so this is the basic type if the case uh, the wear can be takes place in this case uh, the bearing has to replace completely. So in order to avoid such uh, condition or not to avoid such difficulty we can introduce a, a bearing liner here. So this is a type of bearing called the bushed bearing which is a simple type again. So in the inside of the these uh, hole what you are provided in the solid bearing we can introduce a, a bearing liner using made up of the brass or bronze. So which is uh, here you can observe this is a bearing liner here. In this case uh, so if there is a chance of uh, wear so there is a possibility of wear we can simply change the bearing liner instead of uh, replacing the bearing. So you can observe in the solid bearing if it is an, uh, if, it, if there is a chance of wear we need to change the complete bearing in the case of solid bearing. But in the case of uh, bush type of bearing instead of replacing the complete bearing we can simply replace the bearing liner here. Clear? So here uh, in the, both the types of solid bearing as well as a bush type of bearing so there is one of the difficulty that is shaft has to be inserted or shaft cap to be accommodated through the ends. So here com uh, com com compulsorily that the shaft has to the free ends to insert or assemble the bearing. So in such of the cases sir, in order to account the number of bearings for the larger shafts. So if you want to replace the bearing or if you want to replace the bearing liner we need to free the one end of the shaft. So that is the shaft is assembled in a fashion one end of the shaft is assembled to the power source or electric source or whatever it is. So on another end is also there is a, some assembly part is there. So if we want to uh, replace this bearing or replace the liner we need to free the one end of the shaft. So that will make some complexity in the assembly purpose. So that uh, that will give rise to the another type of bearing that we call it as a pedestal bearing. So these pedestal bearings are uh, that means if you see the clear uh, diagram here so that will be in uh, a splitted part. So in the case of solid or the bushed bearing, the bearing block is a single component as a single one. So but coming to the pedestal bearing, the bearing block can be divided into two halves that is a so the bottom base, the, the base part that is a body and there is a cap portion will be presented and both the cap as well as the body can be assembled by means of uh, bolts and nuts. So that based upon the size of the bearing that is the width of length of the bearing and the number of bolts can be varied that is another scenario. So that uh, it, it is easy to assemble that is easy to replace the bearing liner or bearing uh, while uh, the shaft is in assembly mode. So no need to separate the that is a split end. So here the bearing portion will be separate from the so in this fashion so we can split the two parts so the cap is different from the body. So this is a body and this is a cap portion. You can simply split it into two halves so it can easy to assemble wherever we required in the assembly part. So clear so these are the three types of bearings in the sliding contact which can support the radial type of loads. So one is a solid bearing and bushed bearing and another one is pedestal bearing. And com coming to the bearings so which can support the a axial type of load that we call it the thrust bearings. In that we have a two different types of thrust bearings. So one is a collar bearing so which is majorly used for uh, horizontal shaft so for example you can take a shaft in this fashion 
so for example uh, so if the shaft can takes place in this motion so there is a possibility of the uh, reciprocatory motion will be there but uh, that motion we are not desired so in order to avoid this uh, reciprocatory motion we can place these uh, collar bearings here so that uh, we can place an collar here so in this fashion so again it will be placed again as the block so that whenever the shaft can tends to move in this direction so these collar what you are provided upon the shaft uh, that can restrict the motion of the shaft so here the collars may be divided into that is a, either it is a single collar so if it is a, the figure it shows the single type of collar bearing or you can also use uh, the collars will multiple so that we call it as a multi collar so these uh, single collar can restrict the motion in a single direction but you can place the another collar in the opposite direction so that it can also restrict the motion in this fashion that is opposite to the previous uh, motion so that uh, that can eliminate the to and fro motion so this is the main purpose of the collar bearings clear so that is mainly used for horizontal type of bearings and coming to the foot step bearing so this foot step bearing we can also call it as a pivot bearing so here you can see the assembly of uh, pivot bearing so this is the portion of shaft and upon which we are having the bushes and this is the portion of body and uh, here we are having the disc so here the shaft can be ended in the bearing so in all the previous cases the shaft is a through shaft but in the case of uh, pivot or the foot step bearing uh, so the shaft is going to end inside of the bearing so in order to that is uh, to resist the force acting on the shaft you can place the disc part here to avoid the disc disc can be fix it to the body inside the body by means of snug so that construction you already seen so this is mainly used for vertical type of shafts in some of the cases you can also use it for horizontal shafts clear so this is the basic classification of the sliding contact bearings but as per our syllabus point of view we are going to mainly focus on the sliding contact bearings which are subjected to the radial type of load so we can also have the design of uh, bearings that are subjecting only for the radial load so we are not considering any of these collar bearings or foot step bearings but for your uh, knowledge we have, we have to know the what are the various types of bearings we have so and uh, and what type of uh, how the construction is it going to be we need to know clear so that is up to the types of uh, bearings and coming to the case and uh, we can also classify the sliding contact bearings as i said that it is a plain bearings of the sleeve bearings so if these sleeve bearings subjected to the radial type of loads that is perpendicular to the axis of the shaft and that the bearings we call it as a journal bearings as i clearly said that so we need to remember this word journal so as the journal represents so it is a shaft which will lies on the sleeve so for example i can not see the clear image here so this is the surface of the bearing surface that is a bearing portion so this is the bearing and this is the portion of shaft so whatever the portion of shaft that uh, under the assembly of bearing or upon the sleeve that the portion of shaft we call it as journal clear so again these journals can also be divided that is the journal bearings can also be divided classified based upon the arc of contact between the bearing surface and the shaft surface so that can be divided into or the classified into three types so one is a full journal bearing and another one is partial journal bearing and another one is fitted journal bearing so here uh, coming to the first first type that is a full journal bearing we call it as so here full journal bearing means the arc of contact between the bearing surface as well as the shaft that is a portion of journal portion of shaft we call it as journal so the angle of arc of contact between the journal and the bearing uh, which will give say, around 360 degrees that is a complete circumference it can enclose it completely by means of sleeve upon a shaft that the type of bearing we call it as full journal bearing clear you can clearly observe this diagram so this is the shaft portion so that is completely enclosed by means of the bearing surface this type of bearings we call it as a full journal bearing and coming to the partial journal bearing so there is a there is no enclosure completely around the circumference but it is partly enclosed with the angle of 120 degrees so it is only gives 120 degrees of enclosure by means of sleeve around the shaft or around the journal that the bearings we call it as partial bearing 
So here one of the difference I can observe clearly. So there is always a diameter of the bearing is slightly larger than the diameter of the journal. So that the difference of the diameters give the, give the clearance between the surfaces that will provide the that will provides the lubricant so in order to reduce the friction or wear. So here in the case of partial and full journal bearing, the diameter of the bearing should always greater than the diameter of the journal that will provide a clearance between the two surfaces. So clear, so but coming to the fitted journal bearing, so the diameter of the, the angle of contact between the bearing surface and the journal surface is the 120 degrees as same that of the fit that is a partial bearing. But coming to the diameters, the only the difference between the partial and fitted journal bearing is uh, the diameters of the bearing surface, that is the diameter of the bearing as well as the diameter of the journal are same. So that is only the difference between the partial journal bearing and fitted journal bearing. The diameter is same in the case of fitted journal bearing, that is the diameter of the journal as well as the diameter of the bearing is same. But in the case of partial journal bearing, the diameter of the bearing is slightly larger than the diameter of the journal which will provide the clearance for the lubrication. Clear and coming to the main difference between the full and partial journal bearing. So where we can use these type of uh, full journal bearing and partial journal bearing. In majority of the cases who go with the full journal bearing, in uh, only in uh, some of the few cases who go with the partial journal bearing. So where you can observe. So here in the case of the full journal bearing, the load that load can be acting upon the bearing can support in any of the direction. So any of the direction in the sense it is a radial type of load which will be acting perpendicular to the axis of the shaft but around the circumference of the journal it can act. So whatever the direction of the load around the circumference the load may be acting on the journal. So the full journal bearing can support the load in any direction around the circumference. That is the main advantage in the type of full journal bearing. But coming to the partial or fitted journal bearing, the load can be supported only when the load is acting opposite to the, the presence of the bearing. So here you can observe the load can be taken only here or here in this case. So that is if you place the bearing in this portion, so the load has to be taken in this direction. In the similar fashion, if the bearing can be placed here, so the load can be taken in this direction. Clear? So the load has to take in only that is a, when it is a opposite to the placement of the bearing then only the these type of bearings are suitable. So mainly these partial or fitted journal bearings are observed in railroad uh, that is a railway wagon rear axles. So we can observe these kind of partial bearings and remaining all the majority of the cases uh, so we can go with the full type of journal bearings. Clear? So that is a uh, the classification that is a general bearings based upon the arc of contact. So in the design as per our syllabus point of view we can go through the full journal bearings. Clear? So that is a full journal bearings and coming to the one of the part uh, whatever I mentioned here. So we are providing uh, the diameter of the shaft is always slightly small, uh, smaller than the diameter of the bearing. So that will use the clearance. So for example you can consider uh, the diameter of the bearing as a capital D. So, but the diameter of the journal can be considered as small d. So, the difference of uh, diameters use the clearance, diameter of clearance. Clear? So, capital D minus small d. So, why this clearance can be provided between the two surfaces? So, as I said that it is a sliding contact bearing, there is always a, a surface contact will be there. Clear? So whenever the contact that is metal to metal contact, the presence of metal to metal contact is, is uh, present. So which causes uh, or which gives rise to the friction. So there is always a friction component will be there. So in order to reduce this friction, we need to apply a lubricant between the two surfaces. So that the lubricant can take away that uh, or reduce the friction or you can, it can also help to prevent the wear or in some of the cases it can avoid the corrosion as well as due to the continuous contact between these two machine components one of the component is having the relative motion that will generates heat that heat can also be taken away by the lubricant that we provided between these clearance space. So whatever the space we have pro clearance we provided between these two surfaces in that we can provide a lubricant that lubricant may help to reduce the 
a friction as well as a wear and in some of most of the cases it can also take away the heat that generated between the two surfaces and that is what we call it as lubrication. So lubrication is very much essential in the bearings or bearings. So it can, it is a science which can apply the suitable uh, liquid so that we call it as a lubricant between the two machine surfaces that we call it as a lubrication so of a lubrication process. So the main objectives of the lubrication is to avoid the wear or to prevent the wear and it can reduce the friction. So that is the main object of the lubrication is to reduce the friction between the two surfaces as well as it can prevent wear and it can also remove the heat generated that is to carry over the heat generated and it can also prevent or work against the corrosion. These are the main objectives of the lubrication and what are the different types of lubricants or what they are uh, uh, properties, desired properties for the lubricant that we can discuss uh, in the coming classes and before going that there is a different types of lubrication processes we can uh, follow in the bearings. So that is a basic modes of lubrication. So we know that lubrication is need to, it is essential to operate the bearings with a minimum friction. So lubrication is very much necessary in the bearings and what are the different types of lubrication modes we have in the sliding contact bearings we can go through it. So and coming to the modes of lubrication that is, so we are having the three different types of modes that we call it as the modes of lubrication. One is the thick film lubrication and the bearings that can operate using the thick film lubrication we call it as a thick film bearings that is based upon the lubrication process also can also classify the bearings. So based upon the thick film the bearings can operate we call it as a thick film bearings and another one is a thin film bearings that is a mode of lubrication that forms the thin film so that the bearings can operate using the thin film we call it as thin film bearings and the third one is zero film bearings clear so what is thin film what is thick film and what is zero film is a uh, let us see so in uh, thick film bearings okay so the basic modes of uh, lubrication that is a thick film lubrication thin film lubrication and zero film lubrication Clear? So the bearings that can operate using those kind of uh, lubrication methods, we call it as a zero thin film bearings, thick film bearings and zero film bearings. So let us come to the what is thick film bearings. So here thick film is a condition or it is stating that so the, the surface that can be separated completely by means of a thick for layer of lubricant. So for example, you can take a layer. So here, uh, so this is uh, one of the surface. machine surface and the so it is a bearing surface. So if you observe clearly, so the surface of the bearing as well as the surface of the machine component that is supporting, so both can be separated, clearly separated the, there is no direct contact between the two surfaces. These two surfaces are completely separated by means of a thick layer of lubricant. So this is what the thickness of the lubricant indicates. So the thick layer of lubricant that separated the two components that is the two surfaces that is a bearing surface as well as a machine component surface that the type of lubricant lubrication we call it as thick film lubrication and the bearings which can operate using these kind of uh, thick film uh, lubrication we call it as thick film bearings. Clear? That is what the thick film bearings are. So the bearing surfaces that is the machine surfaces are completely separated by the thick layer of lubricant we call it as a thick film bearings. There is no any metal to metal contact so that uh, there is no metal friction is present in the case of uh, thick film bearings. There is only a viscous friction that due to the that is viscosity of the lubricant that are present in the thick film bearings. And coming to the thin film bearings so you can see take the same example for the so here the bearings, the surfaces of the machine surface as well as the bearing surface uh, can be separated but uh, there is a partial metal to metal contact will be there. The layer of lubricant is very thin by the application of the force it can uh, beyond the oil pressure that will break the oil film that will form a direct metal to metal contact in this position. So if you observe there is no contact up to from this position to this position. So but there is another thick film can break here in this position. 
so which will uh, forms a direct contact between the two surfaces so here the thick film means uh, the layer of lubricant uh, is there is present but the layer of lubricant is insufficient to hold the pressure of the force acting on the bearing that will uh, causes the breakage of the layer of lubricant that results in a direct metal to metal contact that is a partial metal to metal contact gives rise to the metal friction along with the viscous friction that we call it as thin film bearings clear so and there is another type of bearings that we call it as an another type of lubrication that is zero film lubrication in the name itself uh, there is no layer of lubricant is present so in the previous two cases thick film as well as the thin film there is a loop layer of lubricant is present but in the case of zero film lubrication there is no layer of lubricant is there so so that we call it as an zero film lubrication so here uh, so there is no layer of lubricant direct metal to metal contact the carbon or uh, graphite can be used as a zero film that is a solid friction solid lubricant so the lot of research is going on uh, to reduce the friction by means of uh, or reduce the wear by means of introducing various uh, different materials in order to provide uh, a better operation without having the lubrication that is our research is going on that is what the zero film type of lubrication that we call it as zero film bearings clear okay in today's class uh, so far we discussed uh, what are the various types of uh, sliding contact bearings based upon uh, 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 that is a classification so that is the types we are seeing the types of uh, sliding contact bearings based upon the nature of uh, that is a type of load acting as well as uh, uh, the path it can provide that is a, if it is a straight line motion it can give so we call it as a plane or uh, slipper bearings or if it is it can give the circumferential motion we call it as sleeve bearings or plain bearings and depending upon the type of load it can support radial bearings or uh, thrust bearings and again uh, we can see the we are we seen the different types of uh, bearings comes under the radial and the thrust type of bearings and uh, in mostly so the main thing we need to remember is a sleeve type bearing or this may also call it as journal bearing so as i said that uh, the journal bearing uh, so is a plain type of bearing so subjected to the radial type of load as per our subject point of view we can mainly focus on these uh, uh, journal type of bearing so that uh, the journal which can all which represents uh, the shaft the portion of the shaft that lie on the sleeve we call it as journal so clear so again we are already see, we are again seeing that uh, types of uh, journal bearings that is uh, based on uh, the angle of contact the angle of contact uh, between the arc of contact between the bearing surface and the machine surface that is a full journal bearing partial journal bearing if it is a 360 degrees arc of contact will be there that we call it a 360 degree full journal bearing and if it is 120 degrees we call it as partial journal bearing clear and we can also see in uh, the lubrication process what is lubrication and also we see in the modes of lubrication So lubrication is a science uh, which can uh, apply the lubricant or the layer of lubricant between the two surfaces we call it as a lubrication and there is a three different modes of basic modes of lubrication will be using in the sliding contact bearings one is a thick film thin film and zero film so in thick film the layer of lubricant is present but it is enough uh, sufficient uh, sufficient enough that is uh, enough to separate the two surfaces there is no met no metal direct metal to metal contact so that no metal friction is available in the thick film and coming to the thin film the layer of lubricant is present but it is uh, not supposed to separate but uh, separate the two surfaces it can allow the partial metal to metal contact so that there is always uh, a slight uh, metal metal friction will be present and there is another type that is zero film lubrication that is uh, there is no layer of lubricant in the between the two surfaces so here in the modes of lubrication thick film so in order to form this thick film lubrication we can have the two different uh, uh, systems so hydrodynamic lubrication and hydrostatic lubrication we have so how the thick film is to be formed uh, in the hydrostatic and hydrodynamic lubrication methods that we can discuss in the lecture number 3 in the next class thank you